Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pineapple Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, uh, Robinson Smith, who is going to talk to us about the Smith Maneuver. Many of you have heard this. You've coined it. You really need to wrap your head around it. So today, uh, Rob is going to give us an insight in terms of what it is. It's actually a concept that was created with him and his family, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely get into that. Hey, Rob, you want to sort of say hello and introduce yourself to our viewers? Well, thank you, Mitch. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm Robinson Smith, uh, currently the president of Smith Consulting Group Limited. Um, and what we do is educate Canadian homeowners and uh, train financial professionals in the strategy uh, developed by my father, Fraser, the Smith Maneuver. So... Um, I am a former investment advisor. I sold my practice back in 2018 uh, so that I could get out to Canadians uh, from coast to coast and educate about the strategy rather than educate Canadians one on one across a desk. So I've been doing that, uh, yeah, since the middle of 2018. Prior to that, I was um, living in um, Asia. I was in Beijing and Shanghai for about eight years, um, doing some international banking. Uh, I worked at the Canadian Embassy for a little bit uh, on contract. So a lot of time spent overseas, uh, but I am definitely happy to be back in, in Canada and enjoying this lovely summer weather. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome back. It's wonderful to see that you've traveled so much. You definitely have uh, a depth of experience for our viewers. And, and really and truly, I want to get into, you know, we, we use the coin, Smith Maneuver, Smith Maneuver, but let's break it down for the everyday person who's kind of trying to figure it out for themselves. What exactly is the Smith Maneuver and who is it targeted towards? Yeah, the Smith Maneuver is, is a debt conversion strategy. Um, basically, when we go to the bank, we have a down payment, we go to the bank, we get a mortgage and we buy our house, the house in which we live. Yes. Uh, the, the interest on that debt is not tax deductible. So it's classified the same as if I were to borrow a car, borrow to buy a car or borrow to buy food or clothing, what have you. The interest is not tax deductible and therefore it's expensive. Right. Now we here in Canada, however, if we borrow with the reasonable expectation of generating income, we can deduct the interest. So if I were to borrow to buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds, uh, invest in mix, REITs, uh, investment real estate, all these different types of things. If I've got this reasonable expectation of generating income, I can deduct the interest on that borrowed money. And therefore, it's very, very cheap. Now, my dad developed a strategy back in the mid 80s uh, when he mm -hmm. became a financial planner uh, out here in Vancouver. And, and he was interested in the time at the time that, that the Americans could deduct a good portion of their mortgage interest and we Canadians yes. couldn't. And so he didn't think that was very fair. So, <laughs> so he set to work trying to level the playing field here. And so he came up with this strategy. And the strategy is for really any Canadian homeowner who recognizes that or feels, agrees that the old philosophy of it's best to be mortgage free by the time you hit retirement is not the way to go. Now, we've been raised we've grown up hearing everybody around us who are older and wiser than us saying be clear title by the time you hit retirement right pay off that mortgage and the the problem as i see it with that is that when we're 35 or 40 years old we go and we get a mortgage and it takes 25 35 40 years to pay this off so we're directing a big chunk of our paycheck towards making these mortgage payments and the mortgage payment not only includes paying back the original amount that we borrowed, but we also have to pay interest on this. And we've also, we're also making these mortgage payments with after tax dollars. So we first have to pay tax. So with, if I've got a $400,000 mortgage, this is the math that Canadians don't like to do for good reason, right? I have to earn over a million dollars to eventually pay back that $400,000 loan. So right. While I'm doing this over the next 25, 30, 35 years, making these mortgage payments, because I've got a big chunk of my mortgage pay or my income going towards that, and I have to fund the rest of my life, taxes, uh, food, electricity, transportation, I have very little, if anything, to invest for my future. 
So I spend all this time paying off this mortgage debt, not getting invested for my future. And this is why when people hit retirement and they've concentrated on making this mortgage payment and paying out their mortgage to be clear title, this is why things like reverse mortgages have seen such an uptick in, in people signing on for these because they don't have the savings to support themselves in retirement. So they have to start selling the house back to the bank after working for the bank for 35, 40 years. That's a simplistic way of putting it. But, you know, the Smith maneuver allows us to not only get rid of our mortgage faster than if we didn't implement the strategy, but also to start saving for our retirement now so that we have the next 25, 35 years to put this money to work for us, take advantage of compound growth. Absolutely. I mean, that's brilliant. And I really want to to, to break it down a little bit further for our viewers, because you know what we're actually what you're actually telling us is if we are really thoughtful about how we do investments, the fact is most people, as you rightly say, we've been trained over time and over you know just people not knowing what they can truly do with their property and the values in their property, they're typically paying a high interest rate for debt equity because it's doing nothing for you. And then you're trying to figure out, okay, well, for my salary, I'm gonna put some money in the stock. So I'm gonna buy another property and invest into that. And now you're saying, well, why don't we just reverse engineer? Why don't we, instead of tackling our salaries all the time, let's see what we can do with the equity that's in our hands. Like this is money that's just sitting there, we're paying on high interest. And as you rightly pointed out, the U.S. has the ability to deduct that interest rate, but we can. Mm -hmm. So we're paying this money to live and it's costing us. But if we are able to do some, 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 how should I say, creative things with our mortgages, pull money out, then the government actually recognizes that this is a, a legitimate investment that we can make as individuals that now becomes tax deductible like that is really powerful stuff for me you know it means to say that you're telling me that you know obviously you know we're going to be able to connect with you and understand this a little bit more but i just want the broad the broad concept yeah. if i do it right and if i understand the smith maneuver we can take what is considered debt equity and turn that into a viable income for us not only are we making money in the investment that we've made we're now in a position to deduct that interest against the taxes. Like, yeah. How yeah. cool is that, right? Yeah, and, and just to back up for one second here, you mentioned mm -hmm. that if, if, you know, we're, if we're paying off our mortgage, then we're actually increasing our equity. And yes. if we're not doing anything with that equity, you mentioned it's not, it's not earning anything for us. Well, the fact is, it's that we're actually earning negative interest because of inflation. Right. So, you know, inflation recently came out at 7.7%. It's pretty high. I mean, that's not yes. the norm. But regardless, whatever inflation is, if I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity in my home and I'm not putting it to work, I'm losing value on those dollars. So the, the most basic explanation of the Smith maneuver, firstly, you require the right type of mortgage product. It's called yes. a readvanceable mortgage. And what that looks like is everybody knows what a regular typical mortgage looks like. It's this big $500,000, $800,000, $300,000, whatever it is, yeah. this big debt that you're paying down over time. You're right. But a readvanceable mortgage has that component, but it's also got a line of credit component attached to it. Yes. And these two sides speak to each other. Yes. So whenever I make a payment with my regular mortgage payment against my mortgage, let's say it's a $3,000 mortgage payment but $1,000 reduces the principal. Well, that line of credit limit increases dollar for dollar. So as soon as I make my first mortgage payment after I have this mortgage, I've reduced that mortgage balance by $1,000. I now have access on the other side of this mortgage to $1,000. Now, what, what most people do with this type of mortgage is you know, whether they've been put into it by their mortgage broker or banker, maybe they, it hasn't been explained to them, they don't know how to maximize the use of this, they see this line of credit limit increase each month because they're paying down on this side. They say, well, whoa, I got, I got another thousand bucks I can pull from this. My line of credit limit just went up. I can make a BMW payment or I can go on vacation or I can, you know, I can spend, spend, spend. And all they're doing in this case is paying down non-deductible debt on one side and replacing it with non-deductible debt on the other side. 
Right. We have been conditioned by the marketing companies and corporations to consume. And so, yes. you know, maybe there's a bit of, let's keep up with the Joneses in it. Yeah. But we're, we're destroying our, our ability to create wealth because that borrowing, when we buy that car, it's non-deductible. So it's expensive to start with, but also this asset that we just bought with this borrowed money is going to decline in value. It's going to depreciate. Right. Yes. We eat the food, we consume the vacation car deteriorates in value so that is wealth destruction well the smith maneuver says when i have access to that thousand dollars after i make my mortgage payment i pull that out and i invest it and like i said earlier stocks bonds mutual funds mixed reits investment real estate all these your business somebody else's business all of these if i've got that reasonable expectation of generating income i can deduct the interest on that borrowing and that means that borrowing is very cheap if just for example, the line of credit borrowing rate is 6%, then because it's tax deductible, if I'm at the 50% marginal tax rate, it only costs me 3%. Right. And what I'm buying with that money are, are assets that are likely to increase in value over time. Now, That's I don't right. want to pull this money out and gamble on, on very risky investments, you know, talk to an investment advisor, do it right. Mm -hmm. But this process of paying it down and borrowing it back, just using the regular mortgage payment that you're already making anyways, pulling that out to invest, that's gonna reduce your tax bill. And what that means is if I've had the, the, the CRA come in and take money off my paycheck every two weeks, when I send my tax return in, they say, oh, sorry, we took too much over the past year. We need to send you money back. So that's your tax refund, which otherwise you wouldn't have received. This is new money created strictly by implementing the strategy. And so you take right. this tax refund and you make a prepayment against your mortgage. You overpay your mortgage by that tax refund amount. And guess what? Line of credit limit, limit opens up by however much you've just paid that down. And you pull that out to invest as well. So a number of good things happen. We're reducing our tax bill starting now. We're able to get rid of this expensive mortgage, this non-deductible debt that takes so much off our paycheck in record time. We're getting rid of it faster with money that's coming from the government. And we're taking advantage of compound growth. We're able to invest on a monthly basis and on an annual basis with this refund to start generating growth for our, our, our future, for our retirement, so that we're not having to live in our children's basement. We're not financially reliant on our children. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to sign up for a reverse mortgage. We don't have to work in our retirement. We can go golfing, <laughs> gardening, visit the grandkids, right? So that is the Smith maneuver in its most basic form. All we're doing is restructuring your financial affairs so that you have the ability to implement the strategy by getting the right type of mortgage. And then it's just using the money you're already outlaying anyways, that mortgage payment. That is, su that is such a brilliant strategy, you know? I absolutely love it. And I mean, as you know, most of our viewers here, it's all about real estate, right? They're, they're really into the real estate space. And folks, just so you know, the Readvanceable Mortgage, it's, it's available at all of your major banks, Scotia, TD. When you're setting up your mortgage, if you're dealing directly with the banks, ask about it. Get them to set up that HELOC along with the mortgage so that you can, at some later point in time, implement the Smith Maneuver. Well, um, sorry, sorry, yep. Mitch. I'll just step in here for a second. You are absolutely correct. All the major banks have readvanceable mortgages. There's there's other types of lenders, non-bank lenders, traditional bank mm -hmm. lenders that have readvanceable mortgages, but they're not all created equal. They're all different in the way right. they're set up, in the way they they function, they operate, prepayment allowance, all these different things, which means that if I'm a Canadian homeowner looking to implement the strategy and I go into my bank and say, I want to do the Smith maneuver, I need a readvanceable mortgage. Mortgage specialist there will quite likely say, I don't know what the Smith maneuver thing is, but we have a readvanceable mortgage. Let's get you signed up. And there's a good chance that it's not the best mortgage for you. Maybe it's at a different bank or maybe it's from a, a, a different a monoline lender or something like that. So uh, it's we've we started the Smith maneuver certified professional accreditation program. We've got Smith maneuver certified uh, mortgage brokers, investment advisors, accountants, realtors from Victoria, BC, all the way across to Halifax. So when you're interested in implementing the strategy, you definitely want to talk to a Smith Maneuver certified professional mortgage broker because they've firstly gone through a course on the Smith Maneuver. They also know the other types of professionals who are also in the network, the investment advisor, accountant, realtor, et cetera. 
but they will take a look at your situation and say, you know what, you could get any readvanceable mortgage and do this to some effect. But if you get the wrong one, it's going to cost you uh, due to prepayment allowance or due to the restriction of implementing some of the accelerators. So you're right, there's tons of readvanceables out there, but they're not all equal. That's why we have Smith Maneuver certified mortgage brokers to help Canadians. Absolutely. And maybe we should break that down as, as well for people because at the top level, yeah, it's available and it's doable. But also, you know, having even for myself, I haven't spoken to so many people, a lot of them are unaware of it, right? So, and, and folks, just so you know, we will put the link to the website for the Smith Maneuver in the uh, comments. So you just go down in the comments down below and you can get a direct link there and then get into, get into touch with them because there are brokers who are actually Smith certified, Smith Maneuver certified, and they would be able to guide you. So, so tell us a little bit of, about that reach. Like, is it within all provinces? We just come to your website and we can find different people for different markets? Yeah, on the website, there's, there's you know, find a Smith Maneuver certified professional. Uh, we've got over 80 now um, and more on the way. Beautiful. But uh, in, in some provinces or areas, we don't have Smith Maneuver certified professionals yet. It's only a, a recent development, this accreditation program, but uh, just like most things these days, uh, we'll connect you with the broker who's closest to you. They can do things remotely, um, help you remotely. So we have the ability to help every Canadian, regardless of location, uh, on the financing side, on the investment side, on the accounting side, because we've got these specially trained uh, professionals who, in the Smith Maneuver, who are able to work remotely with Canadians. So on the website, um, find a Smith Maneuver certified professional, you'll fill out the little form and, and uh, then we'll connect you. Brilliant. And again, folks, as for brokers, you know, they don't necessarily need to be in a particular province to help you. As long as they're licensed for a particular uh, province, you're, you're good to go. You know, they will be able to take care of you. And for those of you who are brokers and you'd like to learn this, so if you're an accountant and you want to really get to understand the Smith Maneuver so that you can help your clients and your base of people, again, uh, you know, use the website, check it out because the, the program is there, right? Yeah, yeah, they can connect with me and, and we can have a discussion about what the program entails. Yeah, brilliant, that's absolutely wonderful. The, the reason that this is so important is, is you know, my, my father came back into advising after, you know, he wrote his book back in nice. 2002 and came back into uh, advising in 05 and I joined him in 06. Um, and we were, we were helping Canadians implement the strategy with a mortgage broker who, who knew the strategy, an accountant, et cetera. So, but over the years, we heard many stories of people saying, you know, I went, this advisor or mortgage broker, they said they could help me with the Smith Maneuver. Uh, I went with them. I, then I read the book. And what I'm doing is not the Smith Maneuver. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it wasn't the Smith Maneuver. So there's a lot of misunderstanding out there by financial professionals, financial journalists, um, the internet forums are a rat's nest of misinformation. Mm -hmm. So you really want to know someone who understands how to set you up correctly to begin with, but not only that, how to follow you along through your Smith maneuver. There are life changes that happens. There are relationship mm -hmm. breakdowns. There's illness, death, there's moving house. There's a whole bunch of things, emergency expenses. There are a whole bunch of things that, that can happen to someone and that will happen to someone. And at that point, they're going to need to know what do they do? now with their financing or their investing or their taxes or whatever and this is where the smcps the smith maneuver certified professionals they'll follow you along and say i know how to deal with this situation i know how to deal with that situation and we'll guide you right right so that's, that's why it's so important okay so then you know what you're saying is really important and i think to a point critical because you're right in the internet space and in dealing with people, everybody's kind of have an interpretation. I guess that's why your accreditation made perfect sense to get to because now you're ensuring that they're getting the right information, that they're following the right protocol so that they are in a position to, in, to instruct or advise people along the right way so that they can maximize the uh, the tax incentives and they can maximize the investment strategy as well. Because the last thing you want is you put it all in, you send it to CRA, and then they come back and they say this this line item is declined because yeah. it doesn't meet the protocols, right? 
Yeah, and, and another benefit of, of using an SMCP is your SMCP mortgage broker knows the investment advisor, who knows the accountant, who, who knows, you know, they all, they all know each other because they're within this network. And so there's a great comfort in knowing that I am not going to have to explain what I want to do to my mortgage specialist and then have to explain what I want to do to someone who's going to guide me on investing and then have to explain the strategy to my accountant. They already know it and they know each other. So, so it's quite an efficient little, uh, little model that we've built out. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally all for community. I think there's a tremendous amount of strength in it, as you know, with our real estate community as well. People are sharing, they're learning, they're yep. understanding. Uh, you really get into a different world when you're, when you're in that circle. So same thing with the Smith Maneuver. You know, you're, you're building a community there. And if we can get into that, then we have a network of people that they, first they understand the language, the logic, and they understand where you're coming from as an investor. I found that outside communities, you spend a lot of time trying to educate or, or explain yourself and you, you drain your energy trying to do that. Whereas when you're in a particular community, they get it, they know it. Now you're accelerating. You're no longer draining yourself, trying to, to explain, right? You guys get it. And if I, if I know the Smith Maneuver, I come into that community, guess what? I'm going to accelerate. Now I can do the investments. And I mean, we're a little bit biased. We may not be going too much to the stock market side of things. And maybe now is not a great time for that. But real estate is where we really focus our attention on. So, you know, if we pull that money out through the, through the re-advanceable mortgage, and we can show that we're buying another rental property or, or third rental property, then your accountants, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, but the accountants can now say, okay, here is what we are going to do. And this is why we think the interest payment that you're making now is deductible because you are, you are clearly demonstrating that you're putting the money to work in an investment, correct? Yeah, that's very important. And that's where the SMCPs again come, come into play here is making mm -hmm. sure that not only your monthly process is correct uh, mm -hmm. to, to implement the strategy, but also your tracking. If the CRA ever does come knocking on your door saying, hey, I want you to prove these tax deductions, then you've got these professionals who are on your side saying, you know, we've set you up to very easily show them how you qualify for these tax deductions because you don't want to get that wrong. <laughs> but you <laughs> mentioned, <just> <laughs> yeah, you know, you mentioned uh, there's a lot of people who are interested in investment real estate. And that, that brings us to the accelerators. What I described earlier was what we call the plain Jane Smith maneuver. And again, mm -hmm. that's simply using the mortgage payment that you're making anyways to generate, you know, a typical Canadian will increase their net worth over a 25 year AM by three to $400,000 and take two to three years off the amortization of that mortgage. But there are a number of accelerators that they can apply depending on their personal situation. Um, there's the cash flow diversion, the debt swap, the drip, find the pump, cash flow down. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about uh, real estate investors, we have the ability, a lot of people, they'll, they'll buy their first rental property. We're talking about proprietorships now. So it's not if this is this rental is held in a corporation, it's held in a proprietorship you know, under my name, for example. Right. But if I'm a, a, a typical Canadian, I have the house in which I live. I'm making my mortgage payment, just paying it off like everybody does. And over here, I've got this rental property. And I find renters for it and they pay me $3,000 a month. And that $3,000 a month goes directly into a bank account that I've opened specifically for that rental property. And then the expenses go out, the mortgage on that property, maintenance, utility, all that stuff that, that I have to pay to run my business. So looking at a cash flow neutral situation, hopefully it isn't, but for, for ease of explanation, I get 3,000 for my renters coming in and then I got yep. 3,000 going out to pay, pay the mortgage and all the expenses. Well, I'm missing out on a very valuable opportunity here because if I go and get a readvanceable mortgage on my own personal house and start mm -hmm. doing just the plain Jane Smith maneuver, I've got a thousand dollars going down for my regular mortgage payment, right? A thousand dollars out, and I can invest that anywhere I want. And let's say it is mutual funds. That's that's where I want my thousand bucks a month to go to. I've also got this rental property. I can implement the cash flow down. And what that entails is when that renter's $3,000 comes in, yes. don't leave it in that rental account 
to wait to pay the expenses, I take that $3,000 and I pay down my own mortgage by that. Right. Cash. So not only do I make my regular mortgage payment, but I also take that $3,000 from my rental and I make my own prepayment on my own mortgage. And as we know, that mortgage balance has gone down by a thousand because of the regular mortgage payment and another 3000 because of the revenues from my business. So that's a total of 4,000. Well, that line of credit limit opens up by 4,000. I pull that 4,000 out. A thousand goes to mutual funds, right? If I right. wish, but right. that $3,000 goes into that bank account that's dedicated to my rental property. And then mm -hmm. I service the expenses on that rental property, like the mortgage. Right. So what I've done is I've, I've, recycled the money that I'm already getting anyways. I'm just maximizing its use. Mortgage payment I'm already making, revenues I'm already receiving, goes through the mortgage, pull it back out to service the expenses and invest elsewhere. But that borrowing that I do each month from that HELOC, that readvanceable mortgage HELOC, it's tax deductible because 1,000 is going into securities. I'm investing with reasonable expectation of generating income. And 3,000 is going to invest in my business, which is my rental property. Right. I can deduct it because there is a reasonable expectation of generating income because I have renters. Yes. And they're sending me income. So a 25 year AM, when we implement this, we're seeing that non deductible mortgage debt on my principal residence is gone in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 years. So wow. massive speed up in the uh, amortization. Well, of that. Yeah. And, yeah. And I think that's important to understand what you just said. 25 year amortization, you can speed it up to seven, six, seven years. That is huge, right? Because again, the philosophy is, you know, traditionally we are thought, okay, come in, pay your mortgage out so that you don't have that mortgage. Now, most people are planning 25 years to pay that out. And if we can implement the Smith maneuver in the right way, we can achieve the same thing, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> in six or seven years. To me, that's like, that's like gold, right? So yeah. now it's important to remember that you know, what I've done is I've taken 25 years of bad debt, non-deductible debt, and I've paid it off in, let's just say 10 years. I still have that HELOC balance, right? Yes. but it's all tax deductible. And if I'm doing something like a cash flow dam or cash flow diversion or whatever it is, mm -hmm. the more accelerators I can use on the strategy, the faster I'm paying down the bad debt, the faster I'm accumulating the good debt, the faster my tax refunds grow. They get bigger and bigger and bigger each and every year. So what, what we don't want to say is I'm mortgage free in 10 years because technically I have a mortgage because that's that HELOC, right. regardless it's tax deductible, regardless it's interest only, yep. that still is technically a mortgage, but I've gotten rid of that expensive non-deductible debt much quicker mm -hmm. and this tax deductible debt still remains, but it's doing really good things for my, my, uh, my tax bill. Absolutely. And again, this is really delivering on the philosophy of financial freedom. We're using debt in the right way. You know, uh, we've seen in the last, you know, the last year when the government dropped the uh, interest rate to ridiculously low, low, low rates, what did we see? People uptick in terms of buying, okay, they went in a spending spree, they were buying the new cars, the, the toys for the cottages, you know, just kind of consumer debt. Whereas there were some people who said, okay, <clears throat> this is a bonus to me. Now I'm into good debt. I'm buying properties. I'm putting it in the stock market. I'm really using the money. Yeah. So the, this is where, this is the difference between if you're targeting financial freedom, then you make the investment pretty smart. Because, you know, again, what it is we're doing here, and as Rob is saying, we're moving the money around in a smart way. You're doing the same things, but you're doing it in such, a, such an integrated way that, with your accountants and your brokers, you're able to demonstrate that you are doing the, the right investments, which means now you can get additional money through your taxation. You're making profits on the things that you're working with, right? Uh, you're growing wealth. If it's real estate, you're growing wealth over time. Stock market is the same philosophy. You buy low, you sell high, right? So the idea is you're generating the wealth so that when you reach retirement age, you're so comfortable. And this is what we all strive to do. Smith Maneuver is a clear demonstration of that, you know? So I absolutely love this philosophy, Rob. And, and, you know, to use your word demonstration, I think what we could do now is go through a quick demonstration of the Smith Man calculator. 100%, please. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just gonna share the screen here, Mitch. Wonderful. Um, 
There it is. Okay, my uh, my computer is a little bit slow these days. So we'll see how long it takes <laughs> for my machine to get into the calculator. But we have we have developed this, um, there we are. Uh, we developed this over the past uh, few years and we're continuing to make developments. Um, but it's it's something that any Canadian homeowner can can use to see, you know, what what the Smith maneuver could do for them. So, uh, firstly, this is just a fictional example here. My, right. my annual income, I'm going to say one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and I'm not going to fill all these fields in. Just just a few of them for the sake right. of time. I've got a rental property. It brings me um, on a yearly basis twenty six thousand dollars. Okay, uh, and I don't need any of that rental income for a living expense because I've got a job, but right. that rental property costs me in expenses $24,000 a year. Right. Um, let's just say I've also got mutual funds valued at $20,000. Okay, these are paid up investments that I've acquired over time. I've got $15,000 uh, as an emergency fund. Um, this shows um, an approximate marginal tax rate. If it's not your actual, you can fill it in there, but we'll just go with this. And then mortgage inform. I got a $850,000 house. Yep. Mortgage balance is $550,000 on that. The interest rate, let's call it um, 3.7, uh, 25 year amortization there. Now on the readvanceable line of credit side, prime is 3.7%. And the rate is 4.2 because there's a premium of half a percent uh, yes. on that ELOC. Now over here, we're going to start to see some, some results here. This portfolio growth rate, when I invest on a monthly basis or with any of the accelerators, it defaults to 8%. I can put that, I can adjust that up or down. Now, based on these numbers, I've got $861 to invest each month because of this strategy. And just by doing that, I've generated $187,000 in tax deductions over the 25 year amortized period, okay? Which leads to $86,000 in, in tax refunds. Wow. I'm not gonna go into uh, uh, depth here uh, on the explanation mm -hmm. side, but let's just say I only want to accept 600,000 from the lender. Your Smith Maneuver Certified Professional will, will allow you, will show you what this is all about. But yep. just by doing that, I now have 1,025 to invest, okay? Mm -hmm. So I've increased my tax refunds to 102,000 and my net worth improvement is $414,000, which means by the end of the original 25 year amortized period, I'll have an investment portfolio of $916,000. My deductible investment loan on that HELOC of the readvanceable mortgage will be 502, meaning a net of 414,000. We haven't seen any amortization improvement because we have not selected yet to use our annual tax refunds to prepay our mortgage and then right. get that amount invested as well. And if we do so, we see an increase in the tax refunds. We've got 3.08 years saved, which means a 25 year mortgage is gone in 21.92. And my net worth improvement is now $604,000, over a million dollars in portfolio value offset by the deductible investment loan, right? Right. So this is this is the plain Jane Smith maneuver based on these values. This is this is no accelerators yet. Right. Now uh, on the debt swap side of things, I indicated that I have twenty thousand dollars of mutual funds. Okay, I built that up over time. What I can do this is one of the accelerators. I can cash. I want to look at taxation, but I can cash in these mutual funds for twenty thousand dollars in cash, yes. Yes. repay my mortgage, and then pull it back out and buy the exact same investment if I want or a different right. investment. And there's some tax rules to look at, but I can accomplish this in about seven to, day, seven to 10 days or maybe less. So I take that $20,000 in mutual funds, turn it to cash, prepay my mortgage, and then I invest again. Now I've saved 4.5 years and my net worth improvement is 765. Again, this is no new money from my pockets at all. Right. Future lump sums, uh, I'm not gonna go there, but I got $15,000 in emergency funds. I'm gonna say, you know what? $10,000 in emergency cash is enough. I'm comfortable with that. So I'm going to take $5,000 of that and pay my mortgage down, reborrow, and then get it invested. 
four and a half and 765 close to 4.83 and 813. And this is money that I already had lying around. Nice. Cash flow diversion. Yeah. Uh, let's say personally, I can, I can come up with another hundred bucks a month from my pockets to prepay my mortgage and get invested. Yep. 483 and 813, 575 and 913. Okay. But this is additional cash from my, my pocket, but it's voluntary. And let's, let's show the results without any new cash from my pockets. So we'll take that out. Cash flow down. On a monthly basis, my rental property brings in 2167. It costs me 2000. By selecting this, I'm going to take that 2167, prepay my mortgage, pull it back out, and then service the $2,000 of expenses on that property. Because I'm cash flow positive, that means this 167 each and every month can go into security, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, something else if I wish. Right. So let's do that. 4.83 years saved and 813 net worth improvement. 15 years saved, $1.1 million net worth improvement. Okay. So the nut of all this is that over 25 years, which is the original amortization, I've received 200, over $200,000 in tax refunds. Instead of taking 25 years to pay off, I'm paying off that non-deductible mortgage in less than 10 years. And my net worth improvement, I've got a $1.58 million portfolio value. And offsetting that is the deductible investment loan. So my net worth improvement is 1.052. So if I sold, ignoring taxation here, if I sold $531,000 worth of my portfolio, I would still have investments worth over a million dollars and theoretically a clear title house. Absolutely. I mean, look at that. You know, I'm clearly demonstrated on this, this uh, amazing calculator here. So for all folks as well, once they come into the website, they have access to this um, to these scenarios or can create these scenarios or they need to join the, the community or how does it work? For this, is, this is, this is available for subscription on the, on the website, along with really? my book, Master Your Mortgage for Financial Freedom. We also have a Smith Hoover homeowner course for people who want to learn more about it above and beyond the book. Um, but just lastly on this calculator, this is the graph of this situation. This green line represents the amortization. If I did not do the Smith maneuver 25 years, here's oh. the amortization of that bad debt in less than 10 years. Mm -hmm. And as fast as that bad debt is going down, mm -hmm. I'm reborrowing it to invest, <laughs> right? Oh, yes. there's my dog. <laughs> Marty, doggy door. He loves, he loves the Smith Manova too. He loves this the Cal yeah, he loves it too. <laughs> so as fast as I'm paying it down over here, I'm reborrowing to invest and service the expenses of my property. So this yellow line is the total debt. And you'll notice it doesn't increase. It stays constant. Meanwhile, my investment portfolio is increasing. And then I can print off some reports to, to, uh, to show my results and take that home with yeah, me. Here. Yeah. This is powerful. Like, you know, just sharing that alone, I'm sure our viewers are going to definitely understand that what you're showing them is a clear demonstration of planning and then implementation of the Smith maneuver is it's life changing, right? These are the things that we as investors, this is what we're, the dreams we're chasing is how do we get there? And now you have conceptualized it. And as you say, you're building out the community so that we can get the reliable people that understands it, certified in it, and they can sort of help us navigate as well, right? Because by extension, honestly, concepts like this need to be broadened out. We need to reach more and more people so that they can get the benefits um, that's just there. It's just there, but you got to get the concept. You got to learn. You got to understand. And this is really important. Like a lot of people put up their hands. I want to be financially free. I want to. You know, I want to just make sure that I'm doing the right investments. Well, in order to do that, you have to be prepared to learn. You got to be prepared to invest your time and effort, energy and money into certain things that gives you that. So this is one of those, put up your hands, be prepared to learn it because it is going to pay back uh, in unbelievable ways, you know. Yeah. So and again, you know. And just, you know, to close mm -hmm. off here, Mitch, it's, it's yeah. so important to do it right. To do, it, um, to do it safely, to enlist the guidance of, of people who know what they're doing and who can help you, uh, talk you through the ups and downs of the markets and, and, and rates and all the changes that happen in life. You know, this strategy was developed back in the mid 80s and it's been in continuous operation since then. So markets shouldn't scare you. This is a long-term investment strategy, long-term. Yes. Rates shouldn't scare you. You know, the longer investment strategy is, the less 
and that greatly flattens the market risk curve, the rate risk curve, all that stuff. You know, and if we're now we're looking at rates increasing and people say, is the Smith Mover still worth it? Well, as I said, this was developed back in the mid 80s when rates were double digits. And if it didn't work then, we wouldn't be talking today. So get in, do it responsibly, do it with people who know what they're talking about, uh, stay committed um, and, and power through the long term. 100%. I mean, you know, this is a powerful statement that you're giving us here, Rob, because we're in the market where it's changing, it's fluxing, and it's all over the news. Rates are going up. The government wants to hedge inflation. So from the government perspective, they need to jack rates up, theoretically, higher than inflation in order to curb inflation. So we don't know where they will actually land. But what we do know is, as we're chasing that, the money in the bank is going to become less valuable. If you want to hedge the potential sort of you know, inflation eroding your money and the value in your money, then you need that cash to be sitting in an asset. And on top of that, you need to be tax efficient. So you know, connect, with, connect with Rob and the group. Connect with the, uh, we, you know, we'll put the, the links in the, in the comments, as I say. Check it out, because this is your way to hedge inflation by doing investments, putting it into an asset. The asset is going to grow. Who do you think is going to come out of, of this recession or potential recession in the best way? Corporations. Why? Because they have assets that they, they can hedge against uh, the, the growth in the rates. If there's price increases, they increase the price. So this is how you do it. You get into good debt. You manage through assets and investments, right investments. Real estate is a great space to be, believe it or not, in this downturn because now you have a less volatile market, so you can put things with condition, but you can put your money to work so that the asset will continue to grow over time. And then like Rob says, it's a long-term game, right? You are going to realize the, 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 the numbers at the end of it, and you're gonna be pretty happy with your investments, but cash in the bank right now, it's gonna erode in value. Rob, I wanna say, you know, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us, uh, with our viewerships today. You've given us so much golden nuggets. I absolutely love it, you know. Uh, it's really, really insightful when people like you come on board and create these concepts to help everyday folks become better at investing and gaining financial freedom, you know. So again, thank you so very much. And I leave it to you for the last words before we say a final goodbye. Yeah, well, thank you, Mitch. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on. This is what I enjoy doing, getting word out to Canadians about a strategy that can, you know, potentially help them significantly. Uh, my last words, a uh, quote from my father, procrastination is the enemy of your financial success. You know, wonderful. You do it, you're not going to do it. So absolutely, guys, absolutely. You really got to take action. You got to move quickly because everything else moves quickly. And again, you know, from me, just wishing all of you great successes in your financial journey. And we'll talk again soon. Have a great day, everybody. Bye now.